Summer's here, you guys. The weather is scorchingly hot, and chances are you might even have some free time in your near future. So what better time to stay inside, planted directly in front of the air conditioner, watching awesome new anime, huh? Well, today on the Dan Cave, I'm gonna tell you all about the best new summer anime that you need to put in your eyeballs. Berserk. Do, 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 do you have it, guts? Well, Nickelodeon did, and soon we will too, because Berserk is coming back to the airwaves. This beautiful, dark, twisted fantasy anime follows a mercenary named Guts during his time as the Black Swordsman. And this was an arc that was actually not seen in the original 1997 anime, and something that people have been looking forward to. Having escaped the systematic ritual sacrifice of his former mercenary group, Guts is now on a mission to murder the man who betrayed him. Except he has one problem. He has a pesky little mark on his body that tends to attract rest spirits, nightmarish skeleton creatures, and all sorts of evil entities to him and his friends. But hey, when life gives you lemons, what do you do? You cleave that shit in two with a sword the size of an ostrich. The Heroic Legend of Arslan, Duststorm Dance. Game of Thrones may end in a few weeks, but that doesn't mean you get a bid farewell to epic fantasy drama this summer. The Heroic Legend of Arslan sequel series follows Prince Arslan as he tries to recapture the royal city of Pars, or Pears, you tell me, which is currently under the heel of Lusitanian armies. Will this have as much incest as Game of Thrones? Hopefully not, but hey, anything can happen. Just hopefully not that. D. Greyman Hallow. Do you guys remember D. Greyman? It was the 19th century set anime about a 15-year-old exorcist named Alan Walker who had a cursed eye that lets him see demons and a left arm that turns into a sword that lets him slay demons. Yeah, that one. Well, eight years after the original anime wrapped, it's getting a sequel, baby. This one picks up directly where the original left off, which was smack dab in the middle of the Invasion of the Black Order arc and showed the amazingly named villain, the Millennium Earl, escaping to wreak havoc elsewhere. Anyway, this is packed full of demon slaying, pseudo-religious conspiracies, and sweet, sweet sword fighting. So really, isn't that enough of a description? 91 Days. Let me ask you something. What would you do if your family was brutally murdered by the Mafia? What? Really? Jesus, why me never to cross you? Well, if you were living in the Prohibition era and your name was Avilio, you would probably receive a mysterious letter, decide to infiltrate those bastards, then savor your sweet, sweet revenge like a creme brulee. Mmm, tasty. And as you may have surmised, that's exactly what happens in 91 Days. Also, the protagonist seems to be permanently cosplaying as Light Yagami's terrifying face, which should probably be a prerequisite for crazed dudes doling out their own brand of murdery street justice. Onara Goro. Every once in a while, Japan manages to out-Japan itself, and that is exactly what happened with Onada Goro. Now, let me read the description because it is well and truly bonkers. The story follows the everyday life of Goro, the quote, most admirable of farts, as he solves problems in the ways that only a fart can. <sighs> as someone with no sense of smell, I can't imagine what that means. But as someone with a human butt, I can't wait for this shit. Mob Psycho 100. If One Punch Man and Akira had a baby, you would get Mob Psycho 100. Which makes sense because it's from the creator of One Punch Man. This anime tells the story of Mob, a young boy with immense psychic powers who has a problem. If he becomes too emotionally overwhelmed, his body will explode. Not like in a torrent of tears and regrettable Facebook posts, but like in a massive explosion. You know, that old chestnut. That old, emotionally unstable, just trying to keep it together, so get off my back, mom, chestnut. Oh, yeah, and there's a, a weird Slimer-style ghost, too, because why the hell not? Anime. Kingsglaive Final Fantasy XV. Don't lie to me. You want to play Square Enix's new J-Rock boy band simulator more than anything. But don't worry, because Squeenix is taking things a step further with Kingsglaive. It's an animated CG companion movie that tells the story of what happens to King Regis and Luna Freya when Final Fantasy XV's protagonist Noctis leaves on a road trip with his best bros. Now, considering the English dub stars Sean Bean, Lena Headey, and Aaron Paul, you better believe it's gonna have top-notch voice talent. And that Sean Bean's character's gonna die. Seriously, dude dies in roughly 30% of the movies he's in. Kyle Hill calculated it. Ask him for other bean facts on Twitter right now. At SciFile, use hashtag bean facts. Relife. For some people, high school was the best time in their life. For Arata Kaizaki, it's gotta be better than his current existence. 27 years old, jobless, cut off from his parents' financial support. So naturally, he does what any one of us would do. He decides to take an experimental pill that'll transform him back to his 17-year-old self so he can redo his high school experience, giving him one year to find what will truly make him happy. Hopefully not some of that high school strange, because this anime sounds creepy enough already, but 
I mean, then again, isn't all anime creepy on some level? Shokugeki no Soma ni no Sada, also known as Food Wars, the second plate. This food anime follows Soma Yukihara, a high schooler with a dream to become a full-time chef and defeat his father in single combat. Wait, that's my dream, sorry. I meant to become an even better chef than his dad. Anyway, season two brings us back to the elite culinary school where Soma studies, and did I mention it only has a 10% graduation rate? I mean, seriously, that is abysmal. You should probably focus on reevaluating their curriculum instead of just failing out students left and right. Do they not want chefs in the world? Anyway, I digress. Season two is gonna offer even more mouthwatering action, so maybe stock up on snacks before you dive into this one. Personally, I recommend Sriracha Popcorn. Did you know that exists? It does, it's spicy, and it's fucking great, man. It's real good. Now guys, this is just a smattering of some of the awesome anime coming your way this summer. But tell me, what series are you most excited to see and why? Let me know in the comments below and give me a super animated thumbs up while you're there. That's all for today's show. Join us next time when we talk about the story of a young girl who stumbles into an abandoned amusement park and must save her parents who get turned into public access TV host in Spirited of Wayne's World. Until next time, keep on digging. Let's open up the old mailbag, shall we? At Island Arcade asks, Big Spoon, Little Spoon, or Middle Spoon? <laughs> the answer, my dear boy, is quite simple. Big Spoon. Because then you can pretend that you're Kazooie from Banjo-Kazooie or a giant fleshy parachute on someone's back. Game, set, a snuggle. At Roel, oh. <laughs> <laughs> At Roel Velhusian, I apologize for butchering your name, asks, you have angered a wizard. Oh, you may choose one of two punishments. Cut off one of your pinky fingers or one of your big toes. Which do you choose? Well, here's the thing. I I'm not trying to give people the impression that I'm in the Yakuza and I'm never gonna wear sandals because they're the goddamn worst. So I'm definitely cutting off that big toe. I mean, sandals, come on, get out of here with that. Dude shouldn't wear sandals, period. At Dennerdeck asks, what do you know about Brazil? Oh, okay, great question, let's see. Uh, I know that it's home to several Osama Bin Laden themed bars. It's filled with uh, potentially escaped Nazis and has been the world's largest exporter of coffee for 150 years. Oh, 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 also there's 4,000 airports, that's so many. What do you guys know about Brazil? Let me know in the comments below. And, and real quick, next week marks my 100th episode, which is pretty insane to me. I can't believe we finally, I can't believe we've been doing this for several weeks, let alone a hundred. So I just want to say thank you so much to everyone who's tuned in for any amount of time at all. I mean, really, I sincerely appreciate it. I would not be doing this without you. And I want to know what you guys want to see for the hundredth episode and beyond. So please let me know in the comments below what you want to see. Hit me up on Twitter, use hashtag the Dan Cave, and I'll see you guys next time.